Good evening. Welcome to the meeting of the Northampton School Committee. It's July 10th, 2014. My name's Ed Sahowski. I'll be chairing the meeting this evening as our mayor is across town at the City Council meeting. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Present. 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 Here. 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 Present. Thank you. I just want to say welcome to our new superintendent who's joining us for the first time at his first uh, school committee meeting. So welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we have announcements. Does anybody have any announcements? Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, do we have anybody signed up for public comment? Okay, seeing none. Uh, an announcements? Any announcements? Okay. Uh, first up on our agenda this evening is the approval of some minutes. School committee meeting of June 12, 2014, and a special school committee meeting on June 23, 2014. For a motion to approve. Motion okay. to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, that I guess that's part of the consent agenda. Okay. So um, I suppose we could approve the minutes individual. Well, those two, and then we can go back to the contracts. That's fine. Sure. However okay. you want to do. I missed that. <coughs> so, um, so we're doing just the minutes portion. We're just doing the minutes right now. The okay. approval of the school committee minutes, uh, the June 12th and the June 23rd, 2014. We had a motion uh, to approve motion. in a second. Yes. Any other? Right. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. And then under contracts, under the consent agenda, we have several contracts this evening. Uh, the collaborative for educational services, professional development services, not to exceed $26,000. ASCD district-wide professional development for $13,500. Tri-State Technologies maintenance for cafeteria point of sale system, $15,000. Diversified construction services, Bridge Street playground renovation, $185,286. Mansfield Paper Company, janitorial supplies, $10,781.40. Alston Supply Company, cleaning supplies and equipment, $20,079.61. Alston Supply Company, janitorial supplies, $22,308.70. Alston Supply Company, flooring finishing products, $17,672.31. Chilson Shops, new mini blinds for Leeds School, $13,460. And finally, Sullivan, Hayes, and Quinn, a two year general legal service contract, $30,000. Is, um, does it, was that including Valley Communication contract? Was that in there? Uh, we are pulling that one out. It's right. not I just wanted yet. to make sure that that was pulled out. Yep. Okay. Then um, otherwise, I move to accept the contracts or approve the contracts. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Could yes, ma'am. Make a quick note for our newer members. I don't know if we've had this come up before, but I am on the board of the collaborative, but I am on the board because you send me there. So it, it's not considered to be a conflict for me to vote to approve this contract, us paying them because I get no remuneration for doing it, and I'm on that board only because you tell me to be. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. <laughs> you <know. laughs> All right, under the reports and recommendations, we have several votes this evening. The first vote is uh, the acceptance of a gift from Bridge Street PTO Playground Funds. And I'll turn that over to uh, Superintendent Provost. Thank you. 
Um, one of the contracts that you just approved was <coughs> for the construction and installation of a new playground at Bridge Street. The entire cost of that project is 185286 165000 is coming from the CPA, um, and the Bridge Street PTO has generously offered to fund the remaining 20286 In fact, they sent us a check, um, so recommending a vote to accept the check. Move to accept the check with gratitude. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you very much. I know this has been something that the community has been working on for quite a while. It's great to see the funding now in place. The work will be underway and the kids will be out there before we know it. So that's wonderful. I'd also like to say I think it's a great use of the CPA funds. I'd like to thank City, thank city Council for putting it and sending it our way. So, the whole process. Thank you. All right. The next is a vote, uh, another gift, uh, the JFK Middle School sign. And I'll have Mr. Matt Collins come to the podium to answer any questions you might have or to discuss it. Uh, the idea for the new sign on front of JFK came from the school council and their desire to improve communication between JFK and the community. Uh, approximately two years ago, Principal Leslie Wilson had mentioned that this um, was a long-standing wish in the JFK community but money was always uh, a hindrance in having this wish come true. Uh, she said that the school council had a, had a goal to fundraise and get the sign, but it was a very slow process. Um, this was mentioned at a JFK uh, PTO meeting, and the PTO decided to take on some fundraising efforts um, to, to have this come true, um, and they felt this sign would, would benefit the entire JFK community. The design and construction of the sign is being done by um, Seagull and Godfrey Company, um, and the PTO has worked together with them on evaluating the setting at JFK. Uh, they have taken into consideration the size and color and design of the current JFK sign, and the same company is also installing a similar sign at the Leeds Elementary School. It, this, this new sign will be located in the area where you see, you now see the two, the two by four wooden frame out front that's used to hang a wooden sign um, on the front yard of JFK. It will be a two-sided cabinet type sign with tracks for sliding letters um, and special order granite posts to match the current JFK middle school sign. Um, the total cost is uh, $2,975 and will be paid for by the JFK PTO. Does the cost include the installation <coughs> also? Include That's an excellent price. It's an excellent price. Yeah. And who did the um, actual picking of the design of the sign? Um, the PTO worked with the company that did the design, and I believe that it's designed, um, besides the colors, I think it's almost identical to what's going up at Leeds or what might be Thank you very much, ma'am. Other questions? Okay. I'd like to move to approve, to accept the gift. <laughs> uh, there's a motion to accept the the gift uh, for the sign at the JFK Middle School. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is a vote to accept another gift. This is the Leeds Elementary School sign, and I will have... Uh, Ms. Selden and Mr. Kanata come to the microphone. Good evening, everybody. Uh, to the new members, Ann, Carrie, and Anna. I haven't met you yet, and Anna. Okay. Uh, welcome. So, uh, following what uh, Mr. Collins had to say about them getting a sign, we, uh, so uh, we want one as well. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> we figured you'd be so eager in the fact that we, you'd want us to have one that we put it in in June. <laughs> So um, basically the sign is up. When I arrived on the scene in July, my first PTO meeting, September, October, it was already in the line item that they were gonna be raising money and designated for the sign. So not knowing, me personally not knowing that it hadn't been approved through school committee, we went ahead and did all the things that Mr. Collins just spoke about with regards to the, des the design. We spent the whole year doing that um, and we have it up there now, so Amy, you want to add? Amy's uh, one of the PTO co-president. Uh, we 
met with um, Mr. Koken from the school department, and we met um, back in, well, it must have been October, uh, talking about this sign. And we um, also have been, we also met with the designer and installer and maker of the sign, um, Mr. Uh, Godfrey from Siegel Godfrey Signs in Hatfield. He also did this sign uh, for Leeds Elementary. And, and, it, and on the sign, the, because the Clark School is in, in <coughs> the Leeds School, we have a, a sign included in there that has their name on it too. It's part of the whole thing. Yeah, so it's very nice. It's blue, it's gold, like the, uh, the, rest, of the, the rest of the city colors. It has a sliding letters. It's two-sided. Um, it's beautiful. Right now it says, have a great summer. Be safe. <laughs> couple positive messages so far. Right. So we're a little behind, but we like your approval to keep <coughs> putting uh, messages in our sign. <laughs> How did we decide upon using that, com um, that company that, that for the signs? Was there um, an RFP put out? No, we didn't do that. Okay, so it was it just, I mean, I'm just wondering why we used, I mean, we used local, but I was wondering We were hoping or, for a local company, yeah. and we had heard that pre other schools had used this company in the past. And um, one was working at the, t at the time with them. Actually, they told me they were working on a JFK sign, too. And I thought, well, all of the things came together. We met with um, um, Bob Godfrey, and it seemed that it would be positive to work with him. Great. Thank you. Any questions? OK. Would someone like to um, move to uh, <laughs> accept this gift? I'll move to accept the gift. Okay, second. Is there a second? Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Thank put, you. Put something you. up there nice for you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to just stay put, I see you're on the hook for another one here. So uh, oh. we have another gift here to approve uh, the Leeds PTO, oh. the technology equipment, and I'll send it back over to you guys. Okay. So this one, very much like the, the sign, at the end of the, the school year, the PTO traditionally, um, they have a sum of money that they want to earmark. Last year's earmark was the sign. This year, um, when Jen Gro, Amy, uh, Amory Mogio, those are the th three officers from PTO, said, what do you want next? What could we be designated for next? And technology seems to be the right way to go. Um, so we have uh, some technology in our budget now. I have, or Leeds has a plan to have um, one Chromebook cart next year about 25 carts. We have an aging laptop cart right now. We also have one um, projector, like you see here, that we use in our cafeteria, which is mobile when we have our meetings, but it's old. And it's, uh, it's ready to go, and it's more geared for a classroom. It's not a really nice, um, made, for, made for the bigger space. So we thought the Chromebook cart, the new laptop projector, and was there one other thing? Oh, and then, we have, um, I was able last year with, with the budget to start outfitting the classrooms with Elmo document cameras. I've got one in almost every classroom. I need about five or six more. This $1,500 would outfit everybody. So the whole school would be, would be aligned with Elmo's. And that's what we're looking to do. If the PTO is willing to give that gift, I'm willing to make those purchases with our tech director, technology director. That's wonderful. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the gift um, and also extend a lot of gratitude and thanks to um, the, the uh, PTO there. I mean, it's wonderful what you're doing and prioritizing and how you're, well you're working with, with the administration. And it's just wonderful. Thank you. Oh, they are. Thanks. Yep. You know, working. They are fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Visible in the school, not just for fundraising, but for, mm -hmm. for everything. And then be able to work together is just as nice. It was a wonderful graduation over there, too. Good day. So we have a uh, motion to accept the Leeds PTO technology equipment gift. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have another gift. <laughs> it's like Christmas. Or <laughs> Kwanzaa, whatever we happen to be celebrating. Um, we've got a, a gift, uh, the Claire Musanti Memorial Library Fund, and I'll turn that one over to Superintendent Provost. Thank you. I'm personally honored to be able to present this gift um, because I knew Claire Musanti um, 
And it's interesting that you've mentioned Christmas in the preamble to this because um, my family had the opportunity to spend a few families with Claire and her family. Um, also some picnics in Look Park. And I think the one thing that um, everybody thinks of when they think of Claire is family. Um, very dedicated to her children, great community member. And um, I guess if there's anything that sort of downside of this, it's that I'm a little bit ashamed that my name isn't on the list of donors yet, but it will be. Um, so I'm recommending that we accept this $630 for the library fund. So moved. Second. Second. No. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Great. Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us to F, out of the votes to accept gifts and into the business manager's report. Um, I will turn that back over to the superintendent. Thank you very much. Directing your attention to the last page in the financial report, um, which is a cover sheet for the details, you'll see that to date we've expended 97.8% of the appropriated funds. Um, currently showing a balance of $554,785.01. Uh, however, we have a bill schedule that is yet to hit the accounts. Um, that bill schedule plus a little bit of housekeeping that needs to occur internally is anticipated to consume the remainder of the FY14 uh, accounts. Um, just to bring your attention, you'll notice that in the detail sheet, there are some negative um, balances and line items, but there are more than enough other line items with excesses to cover those deficiencies. And that's my financial report. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good at that. Good. <laughs> Any questions for the superintendent? I just have a question. I mean, we, we looked at a report like this, seems like a month or so ago, and there were nowhere near this many negative numbers. And so I realize this because it's towards the end of the year and all the numbers are kind of adding up, but is this something that's normal as this being my first year at this stage of the game for there to be this many negative numbers in, this, in these amounts? One, one would hope that you don't have, that you budget <coughs> carefully enough, but mm -hmm. in some cases some of those things really are where we intentionally overspend in an account because we know we can take it we didn't spend the money in another account and we'll do financial transfers that'll even all those out as the superintendent said um, some some of them can't be anticipated if it's special education transportation costs mm -hmm. or actual out-of-district placements mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can't control that but there are you know we have to do it and in some cases there are mechanisms for offsetting that we do have funds available to us from um, circuit breaker and so forth. I'm going to ask the superintendent to maybe speak to some of them more specifically as you might have more information or something okay. to share. Thank you. Uh, I would just say that um, in the, I guess, decade or so that I've been a central office administrator, this has been a very um, common scenario at the end of the year in a number of districts. I think the thing to pay attention to is the bottom line and to ensure that there's enough money within all the funds um, to, cover the, to cover the ones that are short. And so seeing the um, available budget right now of 554,000, um, when you subtract out the bill schedule that we have for you tonight, we know there's still enough left in there so that that doesn't go negative. Um, so there's sufficient money to transfer within accounts. And um, when I referred to end of the year housekeeping, that's kind of what I meant. There will be some accounts that are a little short and others that are a little over. And transferring balances within accounts, um, we are anticipating that we'll have all of this covered. Ms. Duvall, then Ms. Mendick. Okay, some are a little over and some are, um, is what you said, a little. I'm looking at line 3300, regular ed transportation, and that's at 149% used and, and a negative 147, 147,815. That seems like more than just a little to be off, and I'm wondering when we originally set up the budgeting, I mean, I understand special ed and us not being able to know, but why not regular ed? Why don't we know what that contract is and how come it's we're so off, far off budget with that one? 
We're actually researching that one right now. Um, it appears, although this may, this may not be the ultimate answer, but it appears that at the beginning of the year when transportation was reinstituted at the high school, the um, budget line wasn't adjusted at that time to add back in the buses. So um, that's why it's a shortage. It, it probably should have been adjusted earlier, but that's, that's the reason, we think. If it's not that reason, can um, we know? Sure. <coughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, well, if it comes back to you, we're here. Okay. <laughs> Later on, another half hour old. Oh, yeah, by the way. Um, I have one more question on that, and that's just for the understanding of it, because um, I understand that it would be harder to figure it out. Non-public tuition um, being down 241000 we used 117% of the budget. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot of the budget to have used, you know, over, but um, what is, why? I mean, what is that non-public tuition? Why do we have less, not enough control to know what we're spending and what we can anticipate? Uh, I'm not certain what that line item refers to. Okay. Um, the tuition accounts um, generally refer to special education tuitions, and there's often variance within those within the year um, because um, a number of the changes occur mid-year. Um, so that would that would be my best explanation for this not having been there at the time that some of these expenses were incurred. Okay, so um, on land 8700 where it says pay increases, okay, that's an example where we've used 0% of that. How come is, um, does that come out of the summer, the balloons? I mean, how come we've only used 0% of that? I don't know. So you don't know when they're going to get the other, whomever is going to get it is going to get the 202. Does it have to do with our 1% um, that's coming later? I mean, but it seems like it's pretty late already with this school year, but. Um, I, I don't know what the purpose of that line item was when the budget was created. Okay. And so I don't know why it hasn't been hit yet. Okay. All right. Wow. So these are things that um, you could maybe look into and sure. then report back to us. Yeah, and on any of the other ones that are, you know, I mean, although it's only $20,000 when it's 211% used, I just, you know, try to figure out why we're not anticipating so we can budget it accordingly. I mean, we shouldn't be that far off for so many things, I would think. I think that was the textbooks, isn't it? Yeah, it was textbooks. And that was that big expenditure for the yeah, so that it just all math textbooks. textbooks. That was a conscious yeah. decision to buy all of those math textbooks, right. knowing that we could take funds from elsewhere and put them right. In. There's also 162 percent. There's you know 149 percent and you know um, 123. I'm just saying that there's quite a few that are at different percentages. That even though the amount doesn't come up, I'm just wondering why some of it we can't. You know, just and, and maybe we can't. Maybe it all falls into the category of we cannot sit down and accurately do it. But I'm just wondering, does it all fall into that category? Because it seems way off on some of them. That's all. Thank you. Ms. Minnick. I did finally remember what it was, which is that um, for, again, for newer members of the school committee, um, other departments in the city, when they get down to this time of year, if there are monies left over, mm -hmm in some of their line items, they're required to return those to the city, and that's what creates free cash, that they call it, the rainy day fund. Um, our mayors have been very generous so far. I'm hoping that the current mayor continues that and allow us to keep the tailings, they're called, from all of those different line items, which is, again, how we go around and do the transfers. Um, so we, we feel somewhat more comfortable when there is a line that's overspent as long as we have another matching line that's mm -hmm. underspent because we know we get to retain those funds and at the end if there's some money left over we're allowed to carry it over in our nest egg for next year rather than having to return to the city so it's it's one of the few little benefits that we have one of the few financial <laughs> graces that we get thank you miss medic for bringing that up an important point and, and I mean I guess I just you know because this budget is we're about ready to sort of put it to bed I guess the hope would be since we've completed the budget process a few months ago that what we planned for fiscal year 15 we were more we were closer to how we allotted the funds 
for what we anticipated. Again, I would say to some extent we did a level services budget, which means we looked at what was spent on a service this year and we budgeted that amount for next year, but there are no guarantees. Yeah. <coughs> Other comments? I, mean, I, I would say too that we, during the year we prioritize things that may not be, like I think we already talked about, that may not be prioritized when the budget is developed. For instance, the textbooks is a perfect example. So those kind of things you just can't predict in the beginning. Okay, we're on to the uh, personnel report. Back to <coughs> Superintendent Provost. Thank you. In the month of June, we had two new hires, 11 separations and 10 retirements, no transfers. Okay, and on to the superintendent's report. And back over to Superintendent <laughs> Provost. Thank you again. <laughs> Um, I want to begin by talking about the educator evaluation system. As you all know, it has three components. The first is the standards and indicators which the district was implementing this year. The second component is the so-called district determined measures uh, which are used to um, develop an estimate of teacher impact. The DDMs have been submitted to the state as required by the deadline. However, enabling language within the contract has yet to be negotiated. Um, so I have um, at, met with the association president and um, begun the process of setting um, in motion some meetings to negotiate those. When um, those discussions are ready to bear fruit, um, I would be looking forward to uh, bringing that proposed language back to the negotiation committee um, with the hope that we could um, be ready to implement in September. I think it's very important for teachers um, because the essence of the impact measure is you're measuring a student's skill at the beginning of the year and then measuring again at the end of the year and looking for a difference. If that language isn't ready to go, the fact that we have DDMs lined up and ready for teachers to implement um, isn't necessarily going to be so helpful. Um, as an educator, if I'm trying to get an accurate measure of how much of an impact I've had on students in the course of their instruction with me, I would want the first measure to be as close as possible to the first day of school um, so that it's not already starting to pick up some of the effect of my instruction. Um, so that that's a, a project that will be ongoing this summer, and I'll be reporting back to you on that. Also, um, earlier this week, I attended a meeting at CES to talk about the third component of the educator evaluation system, which is student and teacher feedback. It's student feedback for teachers and teacher feedback for principals and other administrators. Um, that, I would say, is in <coughs> not even ready to be discussed stage yet but it has to be implemented this year as well. Um, there is no model contract language on that from the Department of Ed or from any of the professional associations that I'm familiar with. So um, I'm putting that on just as a radar screen item because my guess is that as soon as we get to agreement on DDM, we'll be reopening again to um, discuss the, the student feedback piece. Um, also, I will be attending the Executive Institute next week, um, and so I'm hoping to get further information about both of these initiatives, um, and actually mandates from the state, um, to assist us in implementation next year. And then the um, final, final part of my report is the superintendent's entry plan, um, which I'm offering for your discussion and feedback. Um, the, entry plan envisions five phases of my onboarding process in the district. The first phase is collecting evidence, um, which has already begun, um, culminating in a report in um, February. The, that initial report of findings is just, um, is not yet a plan or not yet a judgment about what's happening in the district. It's just an attempt to catalog 
the current status of the district in as comprehensive a way as possible. Looking not only at qualitative sources of information like um, interviews, but also quantitative sources of information like um, our, our student achievement results and our student growth results. Um, after reporting those findings um, and inviting feedback from the committee and the public, I would then work with the ALT team on developing a theory of action and strategic plan. The theory of action um, is designed to sort of make some sense of all those findings, um, put them together in a way that tells the story of the district, and then identify some priority areas to work on in the upcoming years. Um, with the theory of action and strategic plan, the next step would be the development of a district improvement plan. Our current district improvement plan expires at the end of this year, so it's kind of timely. Many of the things that I'm doing for the entry plan would also be things that you'd be doing for a district improvement plan as well. Um, at the point that um, we're ready to work on the district improvement plan, I would be asking the committee for some representation to be working with me and rep um, stakeholders on really taking the theory of action and the strategic plan and putting it into a more detailed form so that you know, teachers, principals, and other administrators know how to carry it forward and actually implement it, then leading to execution um, at, at the time when we have an accepted new district improvement plan. Um, so uh, I, I guess I just wanted to open this to discussion um, and see if you see any obvious admissions. Of course, I'd be happy to hear feedback that says this makes sense. Go forward with it. <laughs> um, but I, I just want to make sure we're on, on the same page before I get too far into implementation. Comments? Um, I have a question about the focus groups. Who will you have uh, facilitate the focus groups? Um, there are a couple of options for that. Um, I do know in the area some retired principals um, who are actually residents who I may use to f do the facilitation on that. Um, when we're talking about the parent groups, um, one of the things that I think is important is that we have um, bilingual Spanish-English translation. Um, we do have someone identified for that. Um, and my idea is that we would use a standard protocol for all the focus groups, so whoever was implementing, everyone was basically asking the same questions and sort of collecting the same type of evidence. Other comments, questions? I read this over at home um, when I was before the meeting, and I was very, very impressed with it, actually. I think that... Um, it's very thorough and it has a definite direction and focus and, and um, it's, it's easy to read and I'm excited to be able to see how it's actually going to actualize. So, good job. Thank you. It's also one of the things that when I was looking at it I thought, well, as we get further I'll probably have questions because right now I really don't know what I don't know yet. I mean, other than the fact that it's great ideas and vision I see. Yeah. Um, I, I like this. I think it was very clear to me. The one thing that, and I don't know if you can do this, that strikes me in Northampton is that we have so many, not so many, we have many families choosing to send their kids to charter schools. And I'm wondering if you thought about that in terms of reaching out to those, that constituency to see what, you know, why they're making that decision. Or do we know that? I don't know what your thinking is around that. Uh, my understanding is that some of that research has uh, been done. Mm -hmm. um, I did have an opportunity the other day to speak to an individual who's done some of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be very interested in taking a look at that Great. and seeing what's there. But I think there's another side of this mm -hmm. also, um, which is that Northampton yeah. is a choice destination yes. for a lot of families. <clears throat> and I think we should also, in part of our discussions with our current families, be asking, so Absolutely. why did you choose us? Absolutely. I agree with that. <coughs> uh, someone along those lines, I would just make the suggestion that we're going to do interviews or focus groups that we include people who aren't necessarily part of the school system. Mm -hmm. These may be parents of young children, mm -hmm. parents of graduates, and maybe business owners in town, uh, just depending on their perspective on this stuff. 
Is there anything in here that you wanted to point out and that you felt was, was worthy of just, you know, discussing with us? I think the main thing is the timeline. Okay. Um, one of, um, I think one of the really uh, tricky things about being a new superintendent in a district is um, oftentimes people see the change of leadership as the opportunity for them to immediately come forward and request action on things that have really been irking them for a long time. And um, the, the timeline in the, the entry plan is strategically um, designed to make sure that I don't start um, reacting to things before I really know what's going on. Um, one of the people um, in town told me, and I think it's very good advice, you have to get the lay of the land before you start making decisions. And so I would just point that out. Um, so um, if people ask you, you can say there is an entry plan, it has a timeline, this is what the timeline is. Um, we're investigating issues right now and you know I'm sure those will all be um, have an opportunity to be heard and addressed if um, seen as priorities. Or is this document being put up on the website or can it be? <coughs> I think it would be good for the public to be able to take a look at it. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Okay, well thank you, Superintendent. Thank you. Uh, is there any new business? You know, I just wanted to bring up something that should have been brought up in announcements only because um, of the date that it is. Um, in November, there is the going away, um, I don't know what it's called, not Day on the Hill. But anyway, it's sponsored by the Massachusetts Association of School Committees and um, Superintendents. And if people who um, <coughs> sign up to go, it's wonderful workshops and stuff, if they sign up to go before J July 15th, it saves um, us like a hundred dollars so instead of being 395 it's only 295 so I went last year and I went alone and I'd urge anybody to want to come and come it'd be really nice and fun to go with somebody or some bodies it's a great time to um, learn professional development from our position and you don't have to actually go to uh, they have a lot of choices so you can figure out what it is that you really don't know or that would interest you or that we could bring back to here and everybody could go and do different things. So I would like to urge people to sign up. If it's November, um, I think it's 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. You know, it's like from a Wednesday till Saturday is what it is. And um, they have, it, it's, it's wonderful. If you haven't been, I'd urge you to go. If you have been, there's a lot of new things to learn. And, and I learned an awful lot last year. And I'd especially urge the newer people to go also. And the older people, they haven't gone, but the newer people to go, because it's a wonderful time to, um, to meet other districts and to get a lot of questions answered and to learn a lot about the process, so. And in relation to that, I'm looking into, I'm actually looking into going up and talking to Laura. July 15th, I think, is the deadline, though, for that extra $100. Great, thanks for showing interest in the past. We've uh, not sent representation, so I was happy to see. You sent Mr. me last year. You know, let me finish. <laughs> I was saying that I was happy to see Mr. Ball went last year and that we have interest in this year, so thank you. Um, under future business and meeting dates, we have a school committee meeting coming up on August 14th at 7.15 right here in the community room as well as a alt retreat on August 24th at 3 p.m. at Smith College. Seeing no other business here, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, this meeting is over.